This episode is sponsored by Cube Gallery, a progressive art space in Cebu, Philippines. For more than five years, Cube has mounted shows of engaging artworks and have also significantly represented the Visayas region in various international fairs. This month at Cube, Ocean Sea, bringing together three artists, Olivia de Aboville, Russ Ligtas, and Joanna Arong. Their profound love for the sea is featured in their works and evokes magical mysteries, inspiration, and darkness. The exhibition has different mediums, particularly in textiles, paintings, sculptures, and even a video installation. This exhibition is curated by Joanna Vasquez Arong and will run from June 20 to July 16, 2019. For more information, send an email to info at cubegallery.ph or send a message on their Facebook page at Cube Gallery. That's Q-U-B-E-G-A-L-L-E-R-Y. This episode is also sponsored to you by Graphic9. Established in 2011, Graphic9 is a creative agency and production company, a one-stop shop for printing, marketing, and advertising. They help turn your creative ideas from prototype to product. Think like business signages, packaging design, product prototypes, and even a marketing campaign. In fact, I'm thinking of having a few 032 stuff made with uh, Graphic9. I saw some of their products, maybe when I get back from my vacation. The Graphic9 Creative Space, if you want to visit them, they're located right across USCTC. You can get affordable and high-quality prints for signs, giveaways, collaterals for you know SMEs or you know, small businesses like me, one man, two man, three man businesses like what what I do, like freelance stuff. And uh, Graphic Nine collaborates with creatives and agencies to create. For Cebu, they want to collaborate. Follow them on Facebook or Instagram at Graphic Nine. That's G R A F I K N I N E. Let's get to the show. Welcome to 032 Conversations, the podcast where we talk to creatives, see how they live, and how they do their work. I'm your host, Carlo Villarica. Okay. All right. So the past few weeks, if you've been listening to the past few episodes and paid attention to the intros, then you already know that I've already I'm pre-recording a few of the episodes or the a few of the intros in advance because uh, as of this recording I'm preparing for a vacation to the US I'm going to be gone for about uh, I you know I really don't know 3 4 weeks something like that so when you get to listen to this I'll be in the US on vacation not thinking about work okay I'll probably still be thinking about work but you know Trying not to think too much about work because I'm on vacation. That's a problem when you're when you're like a uh, 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 when you're a digital nomad. You know when when you can do work anywhere. So even if you go abroad, even if you're on vacation, you can still do work. It's it's a problem. It's also a good thing at the same time. So that's why I I get to have like th- you know three four weeks sounds like a long time. But I'm still, I have little spurts of work in between. But I'm trying to fit in as much of the podcast stuff beforehand. So if you're listening to this right now, I mean, when I when I post this, then currently I would be in the U.S. enjoying my vacation, hopefully. But I'm, I'm uh, unless something you know terrible happened, I'm I'm hoping I'm having a grand time. But I'm probably just missing going out on bike rides. But I'm uh, recording this ahead of time. So, yeah, I hope, you know, I hope uh, you get to travel. I hope you get to go out there, see the world. You know, the last time I went out on a long, faraway trip, that's when the idea to commute via bicycle was planted in my brain. That seed, like, I remember it was two years ago, we visited... Uh, some of these European countries and one of them was uh, Copenhagen and I remember looking around it was a beautiful city 
and everybody was on a bicycle. There was a there was a guy in a suit on a bicycle, kids on bicycles. There were ladies giving away uh, like free drink samples. They were on bicycles as well, and then it really just planted that seed into my head. And then I remember coming back to the Philippines after that trip and thinking. I was so fed up just being inside the car. But and then eventually I realized, wait, I could probably bike too. And and you know, so that that whole and I think in terms of lifestyle change, one of the biggest best changes I've done personally is just get on my bicycle. You have no idea how much money I've saved. It's crazy. I I mean, uh you also but I mean to be fair, having a bike bicycle hobby can be a bit pricey but if you think about how much money you spend on a car how much money goes into maintenance fixing stuff gas i think i still i think i saved quite a bit so travel you never know what can happen when you travel for example in this week's episode my guest is uh, jill enriquez and just like me, when she was traveling around, I'm not sure exactly where, but she was traveling and then she saw like a Latin dance thing and then she got into like the, to this uh, dance community. I don't know if it was a dance community, but she, at least she, she went out and saw this whole dance thing happening and she was like, oh, this would be good to have in Cebu. And if you look at what Jill Enriquez has done in the past few years. It has elements of different cultures in it. So I first found out about her through the Cebu Booze Cruise. It's basically, it is what it sounds like. It's the Cebu Booze Cruise. They they open invitation to people. They go out on the boat and then they drink and have fun. And it's a good mix of uh, locals and foreigners. And then from that a little community, she was able to spin it off in a way because when they were doing the Cebu Booze Cruise, I believe it's in the podcast. We we talked about it. I can't remember exactly the details now, but I believe it was that earthquake in Bohol a few years ago. And then they didn't want to celebrate and get drunk when so many people were, you know, experiencing hard times in the island just a few kilometers away from us. So then she started volunteering in Cebu through Cebu Booze Cruise. And volunteering in Cebu went on to do a lot of uh, charity-type stuff. They eventually helped out Bantayan. We talk about it. We talk all about it in the podcast. And then she's also started Cebu Salsa Club. And uh, Cebu Salsa Club particularly sounds like a lot of fun. They have it every... Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, unless something has changed since I recorded this podcast. But every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday in Maya, they're over over there in Crossroads. In fact, I keep egging my wife to, that we should go. <laughs> I think it'd be fun, you know. Uh, the the in fact, the last time I went out with the, some of my wife's friends, it was like her her friends and their husbands, and then Cebu Salsa Night came up, and we started talking about it. And you believe it or not, um, some of them were into it. So some of the husbands were particularly into it. So we'll see what happens. So I'll keep you guys posted if we finally end up going. Uh, I, I'm still currently planning that we're still going to go out on this trip that I keep talking about. And I have to figure out, well, me and my wife have to figure out where to put the two toddlers when we go out at night. But once everything is sorted out, we'll probably go. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep keep you posted if we do make it there. I think someday we will, one of these days for sure. It sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, who personally I wouldn't mind going a little salsa dancing with my with my wife. So that would be cool. Yeah, but one of the things that I got from this conversation with Jill, and in fact, I don't think she was doing it on purpose. She was not thinking about it when she was doing it, because when I asked her about it. She flatly said outright that she didn't think about it that way. But I think, in a way, she was building a community. You know, all of these things that she's doing, it's it's community building. In the heart of it, it's communi- community building. It's putting people together uh, and then and then forming a group of people to, 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 you know, to do something together. 
And uh, I thought that was a, and then that's, and if you listen to her story, if you listen to how the the history of each thing went, it's kind of um, like a mini class on how to build a community. She doesn't say it in those terms, but I like to think of it in those terms. Before we get to that interview, I also want to talk and help plug her Cebu International Beach Festival. So it's another thing that Jill is um, organizing. Let me look up the details. So it's a Cebu International Beach Festival currently scheduled from June 24, January, January 24 to 26, 2020. So that's next year, early next year. It's uh, sun, sea, dance, uh, creativity, and passion. So they're going to bring together novice and seasoned aficionados looking to learn, perform, watch shows, dance, and immerse themselves in the rich sounds of salsa, bachata, and kizomba. So if you guys are interested, I'm going to link to it in the uh, show notes. Or just search uh, Facebook, Cebu Beach Festival. And if this is your first time to listen to 032 Conversations, then subscribe or everywhere you can find podcast podcasts. So you know, if you have a podcast app, we're there. Uh, if you have Spotify, we're there too. New episode every Tuesday, talking to somebody doing something creative. That that was a weird that was a weird way to do that. Subscribe. Anyway, it, it it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. You don't. You'll still listen, right? Let's get to that episode with Jill Enriquez. So I looked at your Facebook. A lot of stock, huh? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> I, I, that's part of the. Yeah, that's yeah. part of making it like a like a good product. <laughs> no, but I noticed you went on a hike for weekend. Oh yeah. Where'd you go? Um. Went to, well, I wanted to go to, you know that there's a route that goes from, I've, we've done it like a few times before from, uh, converges in Banawa. You go up and you pass through Bihisan Dam and then you, um, somehow get out in Talisa and at the end there's a, there's a cave with a waterfall inside. That was the plan. And then I already forgot the route. So that's why I posted it like, Hey, you want to go on this? Um, adventure <laughs> half day if we get lost that's not bad mm. so but then uh, one of my friends you know si Budoy, he commented oh, yeah, that oh. yeah, he was already planning to go to Kanirag anyways and I've never been so we went so we um, I was as you went to Kanirag uh, yeah Kanirag from Taps like you know the um, Malubog going down cross to the mountain si. via Kanirag to Sirao is that the is that that road Namurag steep Kayo Going down, like um, after good, you Busai know, holid- Busai pools, that yeah, that one you pass down uh, there. Oh, oh, that one. Ah, oh yeah, yeah. I a- went, I, I cycled there once. Oh, wait, did you go all the way around? I went to from Talamban. Ooh. Then I guess that was Sirao. Ah, you can. Yeah, Talamban. There's so many like routes. No, but you can go straight to Busai from Talamban. Yeah, I know. for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. But on a bike, no, I think you die walking. You can, you can walk. <laughs> walk. It's ah, uh, it's, it's hot. I don't know. I, I don't know because like my the reason why I asked was that I had a cousin, and then she asked me once, kind of, Carl, where's a good place to hike? Mm. Yeah, I had no idea. <laughs> I had like I have no idea. No, okay. I know if she asked me like, where can you bike? Why problem? Work. I kind of know, but hike. I don't know, good Like what? You know, I can, I know the routes, but I don't know what you're looking for. Ah, uh, but this one's easy. Hike. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, this one is easy. It was just that we started late, late night, of course. So late morning. So we started late, and it got hot. At uh, certain points, it was like, whew. and I guess you know we're not so we're not in a great physical shape. <laughs> Round is a shape, but like you know, <laughs> for going up there, uh, like everything hurts. Yeah, okay. The Kanirag is really nice. Yeah, it is. I've never been, so I was like surprised. And I was really surprised that like it's it's open space. Yeah, like uh, there's cows. I heard it was like a, a golf course before, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I have a like. In fact, that's my that's my screen. That's the like. That's my. Ah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, we we went through there. <laughs> yeah, it was really nice. Yeah. I was so surprised because I saw, 
because what I did was I I showed I look at like other people's routes what they do, and then there was this girl her name's Shirel Gomez. Anyway, so she's a cyclist. Uh. And then she just passed there. And yeah, I was looking at her pictures. So and I was like, Where's that? Wait a second. <laughs> so I looked at the route. Then I followed it. Uh. Then when I got to Kan Irag, then I was like, Oh, wow. This is it's, really nice. It's really nice. And it's just right behind the road. Like, you can still hear, like, the um, cars and the motorbikes passing. But it's like, wow. Okay. That's really nice. So I want to do that again. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. We're, yeah. Turns out there's a lot of nice hiking here. Yeah, like I want to like go back to that. Well, one of the, of course, Kay, uh, well, I want to talk about the Cebu Salsa Club Sing. for sure. But I think the first time, I might be mistaken, but I, f- I feel like the first time uh, kanang your name or you came up in my radar was that Cebu Boost Cruises. Wait, really? I think so. <laughs> it wasn't the volunteer in Cebu? It wasn't the volunteer ah, okay. in no, Cebu. No, because it was the, the booze cruise came first. Yeah, I would. Yeah, Murag, I was yeah. looking at that. Like, when did the booze cruise start, Gani? Oh, 2008. What was it? Can you, for like people who don't know? Ah, okay. It so, looks really fun It in is pictures. super fun. That's why we don't take photos anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Because <laughs> people have jobs now. Um, <clears throat> so basically, what well, um, before we started, the only option if you wanted, we want, if you wanted to go island hopping, and you know, island hopping is the thing to do in Zebu, was that you'd have to book a whole boat and find people to go on it. Whereas if you go outside the country, if you wanted to go island hopping, there's usually just these tours that you can sign up for on your own, diba? Right? And I'm like, why isn't that available here? So we made that option available, but only to friends and friends of friends. So we would just post it online, like on the, on Facebook, so that people would see it and get, um, they get referred. So that's how it started. And <clears throat> it's essentially, it's not island hopping. We stopped calling it that and just called it what it is. It's, it's a booze cruise. It's a booze it's a cruise. You don't, boat. you don't see, you don't get to step on any <laughs> island. No, because here, Diba, if you, any island you go to, you gotta pay. Like, you gotta, if you step on this island, there's this fee. If you swim in this part of the, of the sea, you gotta pay. Like, yeah, no. Oh, yeah. The people who come on the booze cruise are just the people who want to hang out on the boat, chill, have a drink, dance, and swim. Just you know. Yeah, because uh, growing up here in Cebu, I mean, we I used to go, we used to go to a lot of like island, quote unquote, island hopping. But really, most of the time, you don't. You're just on the boat. Yeah. And so, then yeah, eating, eating, drinking, eating and drinking. And, uh, and then, yeah, <laughs> that's not. This is Philippines. <laughs> they Mo go without. together. <laughs> yeah, so I guess for like people, because I never thought of that. But you know, growing up here, you're like, you're right. Nga, if you want to just go out, it's so just ask some friends or oh, who's yeah. who's in. Oh, mo ni ang amot, and, oh. Then, uh, mana, and then you're and then you're done. Oh. But if you're not from here and you yeah. want to have that experience, it's hard. Like, or you have to rent the whole boat because there are a lot of people who, like, you know, they offer the full service, like boat, um, food, and beers, and on the boat. So, yeah, but it's still, you know, like, what if you're, like, you're alone? It's boring, and you don't really get to experience the local culture if you're, like, you're staying in a hostel and or in a hotel, and you make friends with everybody there, and you go on a boat. You're still hanging out with um, other travelers. Whereas if you, like, uh, if it's on the booze cruise, like, it's half local and half um people who are passing through so you get the best of you know everything so how why did you so you just thought of that because you well that option wasn't available um it just yeah pretty much yeah okay, i remember so i think what happened was i was looking back at our history <laughs> <laughs> no? and then I, I realized i had a i had an article about the cebu booze cruise and then i feel like i just found out about it number ago somebody i saw it on facebook <laughs> and then I was looking at the pictures and I was looking at the concept. I was like, wow, this is really interesting and really fun. And really, easy. And, and yeah, it's, it's an easy, easy fun thing like, to it do. Like it should have been, it should, people should have just thought of this. But you know, if you don't start something, they don't really get the idea for it. So. Well, but no, I remember asking you, Amor, oh, so how do you join? You're like, just show up. Just show up or, in the meeting place. Yeah, in the beginning it was like that. Mm. Yeah, just show up at the meeting place. And then of course... 
<laughs> you know what happens is like, yeah, 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 I'll, I'll see you there. So, and what happens was a lot of people would say they would come uh, and yeah. then they don't. So, and we already computed the amount for mm. it. We already spent for the drinks and then the food and then they don't show up. So who pays for it? So it was a giant loss for <laughs> me for a while. But mm-hmm. you know, it was all fun anyway. So uh, we weren't thinking of it as a business. We just thought of it as like, oh, an outing for us where we invite other people to join us. So yeah. So now we made it like, okay, you got to at least pay half. So you're m- obliged to wake up the next day after a night out of partying on Saturday night and show up. So, but and now um, we made it so that we provide everything, so you don't even have to think about it. Because we realized that if you're a local, you're like, where do I get the beer? Where do I get the? Oh, yeah, so before it was like bring potluck. Potluck. It yeah. was okay. You bring this. You bring that. Uh, not at all. Like bring um, to share. Mm. So what you would be paying for before was just the boat, and like we just divide the cost of the boat. But of course, like we'd end up just being ten people sometimes because. It's mostly the locals who don't show up. (laughs) 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 Even though they say they would come, like everybody has experienced this. So, well, it's a funny thing because you know I don't know. So I spent some time abroad, and then I'm. uh, I I know that I am guilty of this, like (laughs) as a Filipino. So sometimes you'll have these house parties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. You get invited to these parties, like in Europe or yeah, the US yeah, yeah. or whatever, and then everybody's mingling. Uh-huh. But then you'll you'll notice like the the Filipinos. At, at least my experience is like we all stay in this in like one corner, one area, and, and not then, talk to anyone. <laughs> yeah, and then oh yeah, oh yeah, it, it's a shyness thing, and yeah, we're like even even more. I'm gonna assume like here, said but we're like, it's if you put. And I don't really know, no, because I haven't been in that situation. I have never gone to a Cebu Booze cruise. <laughs> you should. <No>. Well, <laughs> once, once, once. You guys are still doing it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, not so. Not as often not anymore. Not as often anymore. Before we wait, it was like once a month. Yeah, yeah. Now it's like uh, we do privates, so we get uh, we get asked for private parties. So that way we don't have to worry about who's coming or not. They book the whole boat and then boom, everything is um, set for them. Usually it's um, hen parties and stag parties. Sorry? Hen and stag parties. What does that mean? Like stag parties, like bachelor parties. Ah, uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. No photos. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, like like somebody's getting married yeah, or something. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Or like it's uh, somebody's birthday and they want something more fun than the traditional oh, so, it, so it really evolved no so like in the beginning it was really for fun and yet now it's almost uh it's still a fun thing to yeah. do especially like i guess you have one that's open to you still yeah. do it i know yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of open to like okay who yeah. wants to come yeah, yeah, yeah of course because oh. those are still the most fun because you get like all these personalities all in one boat and like it's fun to see people like get out of their shell or start talking to people because you really you're in a boat you have no choice you have to talk to people because mm. it's gonna be look so weird like you're three Filipinos there at the corner not talking to anyone well if you show up I guess it's also like an admission and work okay I'm, I'm getting going... out of my shell yeah 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 Do you feel like a lot of people have that barrier mm, yeah like even um, again, uh, the same the booze cruise and the um, the the, um, the salsa they're both the same. Mm. Like we usually have people who in the beginning when they show up they're shy, they don't really like talking to people. But this is like their way of committing to I'm gonna socialize, I'm gonna get out of my shell, and I'm just gonna do this. You know? uh, so yeah. then and then later on they they evolve and then they're like yeah social butterflies yay. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I uh, yeah. because I would assume like. <clears throat> Yeah, that's right, no? Because dancing... It's the same. It's uh, it's a social dance. You can't dance with somebody if you don't want to talk to them. <laughs> yeah, you know, I remember... So, I remember before, okay, I'm not really a club person, no? And then... <laughs> I, I mean, like, more the... Like, we're right now, shout out to Paulo de la Victoria. He's Hi, Paulo. Thank you. <laughs> he's letting us uh, use his studio. So, I'm more of a, like, go to a bar and then watch a gig. Uh, yeah, no? yeah, of course. Oh yeah, right? Yeah. And then, but I remember before when I was still courting my, she's now my wife, uh, si Steph before, mm-hmm. 
Man, she was at that phase in her life where she was like going to parties, like going to clubs. And then I'd force myself to go to a club. <laughs> and I remember feeling really awkward. Uh, yeah. Because dancing was not my thing at all. I was super self conscious. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, so. And then so I, I, I could imagine that like people who sign up for a class, in some ways. I guess you have people who sign up because they're like, all right, salsa, great, this is yeah, awesome. Yeah, like, yeah. They know exactly what to do. Yeah, yeah. But in some ways, there's people like, like me who would be like, let's try this new thing. Get uh, out of the comfort zone. Yeah. Just, like, you know, like, do it. Like, yeah, it's actually half and half. Like, half would be the people who are like, yeah, it's sexy. It's like, I can do this. Like, But then the other half is like, I need to get out of my comfort zone. I need to grow. And, you know, dancing has always been on my bucket list. So let's just do this. So those are the people that I really, really like. Why? Because you can see it. Like, like they're so determined. They're like, yes, I'm doing it. And you can see that they're un- uncomfortable, but they're like, you know, just... They're just plowing through. Yeah, just go and then at the end you see them after five weeks they're like Whew, yeah <laughs> yes. do they get like the hang of it like and i'm yeah. okay oh, yeah totally like after five weeks they're like okay they're yes. probably going home and you're practicing also you oh, yeah, we have homework oh uh, yeah yeah we have homework for <laughs> <What's the> homework? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because um dancing is like any skill like you have to figure out which muscle you're moving especially if you're, you know, if you're not a if you're not a dancer you don't really know like Where's my you no? Know, which muscle do I move to move my ribs, my shoulders, my my hips? So there's sorry. So there's um an exercise that we do for that, like and you have to do it every day, and then like just your basic step. That's it, and that you know you know the foundations is really the hardest. Mm. Well, I won't. I won't like get you to teach me. No, no, yes. no, no, <laughs> no. But <Say> yes, <laughs> it, it won't make a very good podcast. <laughs> No, but uh, okay, that's that's interesting. Okay, the, well, for people who don't know, the Cebu Salsa Club, it's a uh, three times a week. Yes. Can um, you? So we have salsa nights. Um, so a Cebu Salsa Club does a lot of things, but we started with um just um having socials. So socials is when you go out dancing. That's it, and that's how we get most people to hear about what salsa is or bachata or kizamba or. Yeah, all of all of those dances. So that's how we get people to learn about them. First comes the music, and mm. then once they're like, "Oh, hey, this is sexy," and then they see all the all the movement. Oh, that looks fine. Oh, hey, that's not so bad. I can do that. So that's when like, okay, we introduce the the classes after. But yeah, socials is three times a week. Um, we're um, we're working with a Maya Mexican restaurant. It's our event, and we have it there. Yeah, three times a week. It's absolutely free. You guys have been doing it for a while, like years. Five years. Yeah. Five right? years this June. Imagine that. Five yeah. years. Wow. <laughs> it's been three times a week. Good. Yeah, for, no, for it started years. with it's just one. Once a week, right? Once, yeah. and then um, it got super crowded. So <laughs> they gave us another night to like maybe ease up the, the, like the, we started with the Wednesday one. They gave us another day of the week to ease up the, um, the Wednesday crowd. And then those got super busy as well. So a third one to like really, you know, so what, <laughs> spread the crowd. What days are it right now? What days are they right um, now? We're there um, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. Mm. So Friday must be. I mean, I guess it's uh, because it's like that. That's the weekend. Oh, it, it depends. Be a night. Like, um, it's still Wednesdays are still the most fun because it's yeah because it's the one that started it all. Mm. It's the the Wednesdays and then Fridays, of course, people come because it's the weekend. <clears throat> After they go through Friday traffic, they show up. Yeah. <laughs> they show they come, and then on Sundays are the people who really are into dancing. Wait, what are the? Is it like when? Uh, there are there are there different themes on every night? Uh, yeah, oh yeah. There's different themes, but there's also like it's a different vibe every every salsa night. Like for example, on Wednesdays midweek, you need to de-stress, so, and it's the longest running one. So it's the people who just wanna, ha, ah, you know, mm. release it. So de-stress. So they go there. They they. It's more upbeat, more hyper, more uh. How do I say this? Uh, like a pop crowd, you know what I mean? 
like not very specific to just salsa. It's the people who just like the music. Ah, uh, they just want to dance. Yeah, that's ah, it. Ah, okay. So they just want to dance. They don't have to be technical. And that's when also we get our because we have a lot of um, dancers. International dancers who pass through, and since that's the most established one, that's the one that they go to. Ah, um, moba. So like they they know they know I'm like okay, this is where yeah. In, in I'm I'm currently in Cebu yeah, and then this is where the dancing is happening. Yes. Yeah. So they they search online and they see that oh, so this is the longest running one. So they come to the Friday to the Wednesday one, and then when we see them, we're like oh, dancers. <laughs> We invite them to come to the other days. Mm. So Friday is also the same, but it's more, funnily enough, it's actually more tame than the Wednesdays. Moba? Yeah, it's funny. Or what's the crowd like there? Kanang, okay, the, I haven't also been to a Cebu Salsa mm-hmm. Club thing. I've, <laughs> I've been to a volunteer in Cebu thing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Shows you my uh, <laughs> where I lean. <laughs> no? Well, I want to talk about volunteer in Cebu also. Okay, but um, but what's the people like in the the Cebu Salsa Club? What's it? What what's the? Who, sorry, like what are the? You know who show up? Like we well, what's the crowd? Do, we have a wide range mm-hmm. of um, people who come, but generally, um. Our youngest are the young professionals that they've been dancing in university or where they were growing up. And now that they're in, they're working, they don't have a venue for dancing. So that's why they come. Or they just really like the music. Or they've been traveling and they see that they've seen um, a salsa bar or heard of Latin music outside the country. And then they come back, they come back to Cebu and then they search like, ah, there is a, a place like that here. So, yeah, that. And then we have um, all sorts. Like the, our a, um, age range is actually pretty wide. So we also have, we even have retirees. Oh, yeah, yeah. sure. We have retirees, um, expats who've retired here. And then, you know, um, this is the only, they've always wanted to dance. And this is it. Like they're their chance. They're finally relaxing. So now they can learn how to dance or, yeah. Mm. So it's like it's really a mixed. Uh... Very very mixed. So like the the classes are super fun and salsa nights are super fun because you never know who you're who you're gonna meet. Ah, uh, but so the yeah, so there's a diff- So um, the socials. Yes. They're different from the classes. There's, yes. You have actual classes also. Yes, we have. So before we used to teach for free. Um, before salsa night would start. But our venue is a restaurant, Mm -hmm. and the lights are bright, and people are eating. And in the beginning, uh, there weren't a lot of people coming, so like having the class there made sense. But then people started coming earlier and earlier and having their dinner there, and they get self-conscious because while they're leaning to step, somebody's like eating and watching them take their first step, and it gets awkward. So, Yeah, because um, so Maya, that's Maya and Crossroads, right? So the first... The, there's there's two floors. Mm-hmm. I mean, you guys usually do the, we do the it dances on the, on the second, second floor. Second floor is very nice floor oh, for yeah. dancing. Like seriously. <laughs> oh really? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, my sister is actually a dancer. Ah. Yeah, but she's a ballet contemporary Ooh, dancer. Nice. She it, teaches dance here yeah. in Cebu, and then she said, "Good, the floor is very important." Yes, very important. Like it has to be. I don't know. I, I I don't know. What why is it a good floor? Like it, it kind of bounces a little bit. Uh it's wood. Oh yeah. Uh. Like um if you've ever tried like cuz um our posture when we dance is we're actually on the balls of our feet mm. when we dance so the heel doesn't touch the floor. So if you can imagine doing that for 3 hours on cement that's painful oh, okay, yeah. on the balls of your feet and on your knees. So that's why if you like the dance floor at Maya is like perfect cuz it's wood and you just poof flow Mm, so it, it, I guess, wood gives a little bit. Yes, it's not very painful. slightly. Yeah. Kind of like playing basketball. Oh, yeah, I suppose. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly like that. Uh, like okay. if you're playing on uh, playing on cement, it's deba. Right? Yeah, well, Socket. you know, most people here in Cebu grew up playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cement. that's true. But um, once you get to a certain yeah. age, <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. There's <laughs> once you play on a wooden yeah. wooden floors, it's so much. Yeah, nicer. you go like, wow, where have you been? Yeah. So you have the. 
the socials and then so when, so the classes you don't do it anymore no we have um so what we learned was that before um traditionally or well, usually if um if you have a salsa night you really have your classes there like the an hour before that's when you have a class and people go there they sign up for a class it's like a drop in class anybody can just go in so we did that before um at several studios here like dance studios here and what we realized that if we do a drop in course like for example 10 people show up on the first week and then on the second week five of the people from the previous week and five new people so what happens is we have to go back to mm. the lesson of the first week so if on the third week it's the same thing again we have to keep going back so like the uh, people so there's no forward movement yeah it's there is but it's the very slow the progress is really really slow so that's why we decided like we're gonna do it like um one of our mentors is doing it like he does oh, a lot of our mentors are doing the same thing that they, they do full on like courses so they really take you from like just this part to this part and then everybody progresses at the same rate so yeah it's easier you progress faster where do you have the glasses um we're with um, partnering with Paul Sphinx in IT Park where IT Park. You oh, know no, Pole Sphinx, the pole dancing studio. Oh, really? Oh. There's a pole dancing studio in Oh, you haven't been. You should try. <laughs> no, but it's good. Like, we cross-train with each other. Oh, ba? Yeah. So, the, um, the Pole Sphinx people train with us and we train with them and it's good. Like, it's good. <laughs> I'll make sure to link to to them in the show notes also. Yeah. No, I'll look for it. I'm sure they have a Facebook page. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. Ah. It's good. Like, um, because, you know, also people were about fun <laughs> or drinking and we don't um, really get a lot of the um, ex- uh, really exercises that focus on the core mm. whereas if you take their classes they really do a lot of core oh, yeah. exercises and what we noticed was that the more we were taking the, their classes the better our dancing mm. so. yeah I've seen like some uh, pole dancing performances <laughs> yeah. like you know not, uh-huh. not in the lewd way <laughs> no but no it's, it's seriously <laughs> it's seriously impressive yes like, and then the upper body oh, strength yes. of just keeping core everything works like <laughs> leg arms yeah. core wow they like these girls are crazy strong. Yeah, yes. super. So that's why, like, we encourage people to go and and try it, and then come with us. Because now they're they I'm have. Sure, it's fun. Also, it is. It's painfully fun. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you're developing muscles, it's painful. Well, one of the because for me, ba, uh, I, I, I we we mentioned it a little bit. I want to talk about it more sad later on, but the, like. You you have the volunteer in Cebu, yes. the Cebu Salsa Club, and then of course the Cebu Boost Cruises, and then maybe there's a bunch of other things that I don't <laughs> yes. even know about. I, I've hidden it on my profile. <laughs> yeah, well, and I, but but um, but it seems to me like one of your gifts is kind of building communities. No, because all because all three. I I actually never thought of that, but yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, I feel like it. Because I've been to like a the. The volunteer in Cebu, yeah. for example, I've been to uh, one feeding. Yeah, yeah, the one in Mandawe. Yeah, it was um, at the um, C- NCCD. C- C- uh, What's it called? CICC. Uh, CICC. Yes. Oh. Was this after the fire? No. Or no, I think it was before the fire. Ah. Actually. So Murug. Anyway, I, and then, uh, honestly, I didn't do anything. I just took pictures. <laughs> they were very nice photos. <laughs> we had a lot of volunteers because of those. Oh, really? Yeah, afterwards, a lot of people signed up, but you took the right photos. Oh, yeah. Sorry? It was the... the, the, the you took photos of the handsome and beautiful volunteers. I did? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So a lot of people sign up, not necessarily for the right reasons, but they stayed on. So. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I had no idea. I mean, for me, it was just like... <laughs> I just thought you know, I had a camera and then that's what I wanted to do. And there were that. You did the right... Uh, you took the right photos because they were actually really there because they wanted to volunteer. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, well, anyway. Yeah. So, but like, kind of like the volunteer in mm. Subu. There was a lot of people who vol- at that that particular feeding. There were a lot of people who volunteered. Well, there's really a lot of people who want to volunteer. It's yeah. just that they don't 
know how. And exactly. it's a bit um, difficult if you want to volunteer for certain organizations because they do try um, to get you to sign up for at least several weeks or, or months. And I understand, like, you know, looking back that, yeah, that, that, that makes more sense. If you want something... With to, longevity. Yes, yeah, you really, really need that. But ours was just an opportunity for people to volunteer and donate whenever they can. So, but in reality, it's just for everybody else. We had a core team that had to be there all the time. So mm. it was still like, well, it was, yeah, it was still like what, what the other organizations were doing was just that the the main team has to be there. No, but I think you guys, Murag, it started, the Volunteer in Cebu started because of, I'm blanking, but there was something. The um, Bohol um, earthquake. Remember that one? Ah, yeah, the Bohol yeah. earthquake. Yeah, was that it? we, we That's felt why you... it. Yeah, and it started with the boost crews because, uh, well, you know, boost crews, and um, we felt bad running a booze cruise when there were people on the other island and when you're going on a booze cruise you can see Bohol mm, yeah we would feel really bad if we were just having fun while everybody on the other island had like lost yeah, their homes yeah that's right that was that year that they had that really yeah. crazy oh, earthquake yeah. oh yeah so <clears throat> we started with that so we made a, a volunteer event using the Cebu booze cruises page <laughs> mm. Yeah, but then yeah it worked though yeah for sure we got like we got a lot of volunteers and a lot of Interest. So that's when I realized that, well, people do want to help. They just don't know how. They ju- ah, they just don't know how. Yeah. So, can you walk me through? So, what happened? So, the that earthquake happened. You felt like you needed to help the people in Bohol somehow. And then, so what? What? What happened exactly after the earthquake? So we did like um, we did three trips to Bohol, I think. Mm. In different islands, um, and we still did it via the Cebu Boos Cruises page. And then, um, Yolanda happened. It was oh, yeah. on the oh. same, it was on the same year. Oh, okay. And, um, only like even on the, the, while the earthquake was still happening, Yolanda was already there. So we were actually worried about Bohol because, like, you know, they barely recovered after, after the, the earthquake. Now this, the storm was coming, but it, um, Missed Bohol completely and hit the um, hit the north, right? Gonna hit the uh, Bogo. Yeah, yeah. And, Northern Cebu and, and you know, of course, Tacloba and yeah, yeah. Leyte. Oh That's, yeah, I'm, I'm bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah. and it, it was really, really bad. So that's when we decided that you know, let's really just make a page dedicated for that because it's starting to look really unreliable if a, a Cebu boost cruises page <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is asking for donations. <laughs> so that's basically it. Mm, yeah, yeah, oh, that's sorry. right. You, you guys went to Bantayan. Oh, yeah. And that was like shocking. Like, we didn't, had no idea what to expect. So. Yeah, you know, I remember uh, when that Yolanda happened. I think, I think it happened like in the middle of the week. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna say it happened on a Wednesday. I'm not sure anymore. Yeah. It was November, a first week. Was it? Yeah. Okay, and then I remember that. So we had like a a little uh, more timing. Like after that happened, you know, it was here in Cebu. Nothing really. Yeah. Nothing really happened to Cebu, Cebu City. Mm-hmm. So we had like a little dinner after with some of my family, and then we have some. They on my mom's side, they have like property in Bogo. Mm. And yeah, they were talking about oh, kind of the, you know, the people there, and Anna, and then they're like they need supplies, like mm. basic supplies. Mm-hmm. So they're like, oh, come here, come in, me and my, me and Steph. We're like, oh, we're not doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> Let's so, do something. Yeah, yeah. So no. So we 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 drove up there. So maybe uh, the first weekend. Yeah. We drove up there, and then I remember so seeing like. They just cleared up the roads. Oh, yeah. Because I know that the the days before, you couldn't really drive up yeah, there. There were trees on the roads mm-hmm. and everything. And then it was really, really bad. Like, you could see, like, signs on the road. Like, people yeah. like, oh, we need water. Yeah, it was so bad. Yeah, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And then, so, like, a few days after, we were able to go up there. And then, you know, but, of course, we just went straight to... Bogo. Yeah, to the, that particular mm-hmm. farm... No, and then we didn't really bring that. You know, we didn't really think. Number, wow, grabik ayo. And yeah. fortunately, 
you know, Cebu in a way kind of stepped yeah. up. It was crazy. Yeah, I was so proud of like, I was so proud of the Cebuanos. Like, yay! Like people banded together, grouped everything they had. And you just, so, and every day there were people going north mm. and even crossing islands to give out, to give out stuff. Like, oh, yeah. I was so proud of Cebu. I, I remember like, so that was, we, we went there for that, that first, like mm-hmm. a few days after. There's nobody really going there. Nobody knew, pa ba? Mm-hmm. And then obviously word got out. Then I think a week or two after, it was like traffic all yeah. the way, like to Bogo, <laughs> all the way there. Yeah. And then it was crazy because people were really giving, giving, you know, like canned goods. I remember you you couldn't buy any more sardinas. Yes, Prince Warehouse was running out. Oh. <laughs> Gaisano was running out. Crazy. Yeah, when we um. Where we went to Bantayan because we had a we have a friend there, and she was sending photos of how bad it was, so that's why that's how volunteer in Cebu ended up on the island, because it was because we we had a connection there. She was saying, so this is what my neighbors are needing. There's a lot of people here who need this, who need that. So we already had somebody who was coordinating everything there. So they just she gave us a list of names, um, locations that needed it, how many people, how many families. So yeah. So how did you get? So what was it as was it as easy as just posting it on the volunteer in Cebu page and then just saying, guys, we need this, and then you can drop it off here. Was it as simple as that? <laughs> it sounds simple, no? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sure it wasn't. Yeah, no, yeah, but so the power of social media. Yeah, when something's really insane, no? Yeah, it 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 yeah. Basically, everything was done through social media. So. So we already had a lot of um, people who came here and did our booze cruise. So it, it all came together anyway. So for example, for our donations, we had a lot of people from the booze cruise, like majority of them, actually sent in donations. Mm, ah, like hard gold cash. Yeah, because it was stuff. so much... It's, it's uh, easier. It's easier that way. And they were like, okay, um, use this to buy this one. Like, And, uh, and then we provided like... um. We wanted to provide them with receipts and everything. They were like, just take a photo because we know you don't. <laughs> yeah, you don't have receipts. <laughs> no, we don't I mean, have receipts, but know, it's just like, like so on, like, you know, you're doing receipts the... Receipts so when you buy the item, you oh, mean? Oh, oh, oh. Like, okay, I'll send you the receipts. Like, no, 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 you just post the photos of what you used to, what you used the money for. That's that's it. Ah, because they trusted you na, because of the boost cruise. Yeah. It's funny what uh, no, we, we do food actually... and drink will... Uh... <laughs> no, but... <laughs> we did actually become friends because it, oh, it's not sure. like when they when they come on the boost cruise and then and that's it. A lot of them actually come back and yeah. Mm. Yeah, because I feel like that's probably... Huh, that's interesting because I f- that's probably a big um challenge for for people who are trying to do something good because you know when something happens and then if they just go out and say oh yeah we're going to do this mm-hmm. a lot of people yeah who are you yeah they'll how be like I, how do I trust you I don't know you personally yeah exactly yeah. and then you've already forged that bond with, uh, with I mean you weren't doing it on purpose no <laughs> uh, these, we just these, wanted to make friends. Yeah, and, and these calamities happened to yeah, happen. Yeah, and, and they then, were the ones asking their families and friends back home to like, hey guys, so I've been to the Philippines, I've been to Cebu, it's a beautiful place and this is what's happening there. I have friends there who are trying to do to do this. Let's help them out, let's send donations. And quite a few of them actually came back to Cebu to volunteer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like they stayed here for a few months. Like when they heard about... um because a lot of them are also, um, they take a break from work or um, school and then they travel around for like a few months. So when that happened, when uh, Yolanda happened, they actually were at that stage. So they well, flew from Thailand or wherever they were at the moment, flew back to Cebu and volunteered here. No, and then th- these are people you met through the Cebu yes. Boost Cruise. For yeah. The, yeah, so they actually stayed on. They stayed on the island for us. So they would In be. Yeah, they would go around. You know, I noticed that because I remember going to. I remember going to Bantayan way before, and then, you know, you could you hardly saw like a young uh, expat, mm-hmm. no, a young white dude or whatever, <laughs> basically. Yes, but uh, <laughs> right, and then. I remember going back like a year or two after the Yolanda, and then there were young volunteers. Yeah, I guess there were volunteers. Mm-hmm. There were young people just yeah. there in the island, just yeah. chilling. Yeah. No. 
Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean that that was curious, no? Yeah, because kind of going back, it in a way, you f- we were able to form this, and then these are like, I'm sure like the the Cebu Salsa Club is very different from. Oh, I guess there's some overlap, no? From like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from the booze from the booze cruise, cruise or the volunteer in Cebu. The, there's overlaps, but yeah. yeah. But so, did, did you're able to build this community, but you probably didn't realize it. <laughs> yeah, actually, no. Huh? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. No, I, I don't know. I I I I don't. I, I think I suspect. Yeah, you didn't really think about. It. But Mona, like just hearing your stories on how. And then you got people. I guess it started with that Cebu Boost Cruise, <laughs> in a way. No? Yeah, yeah. And then you're like, yeah, just do something fun. And then, and the then volunteer the volunteer in Cebu happened. happened. And then after the volunteer, like the the Cebu salsa. Was that was that the order? No, more or actually, less? the salsa happened before. Amuba. Yeah, salsa happened before the volunteer in Cebu. But um, so I had friends who were with me when we started the Cebu Salsa Club, mm. but. Uh, I was very distracted at that time. <laughs> <laughs> I was very distracted with the booze cruise and the volunteer in Cebu. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I wasn't really focusing on the salsa. So I had uh, friends who were organizing it with me. So we just take turns like, okay, you do this, you do that. And yeah, it wasn't anything super serious. Uh, so, but it was in Maya already. No, like the th- oh, no, no, oh my God! If you saw our venues before, we it took like um, a lot of work to find Maya, like to finally find like you know a home. You know mm. what I mean? Like finding a place that fit salsa. Like, and we were, um, yeah, we we went through a lot of places. Oh yeah. So how did see, how did Maya come up? Like, uh, how did that work? Um. Maya came up because we were at Guilt. Do you remember Guilt? Wow, it's wait, on that Crossroads. is such a familiar... <laughs> it's on Crossroads. Voodoo before. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Then they became Guilt. Guilt. Like, it was yeah. like a higher end. Oh, yeah. It looked really pretty, It was too. super nice. Yeah, and oh, they had yeah, a nice that. floor. Mm. So that's... Uh, we got... Uh, uh, yeah, but Guilt picked us up because we were at another place. And we got picked up there because we were at another place and another place. Ah, so like, so you just started where you could start. Yes. And then the people who owned or who were part of the place, the establishments that you eventually ended up in, where they found out about you yeah, us, and then like, hey, you wanna try it here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah try yeah. there, and then at some point, uh, Abaka reached out to you guys. Uh no, we reached out to them. I ah, reached out to them. Yeah, we like we we have a friend there, and we were we were talking. And he said, like, hey, you know, since uh, guilt is going to be gone, have you seen the floor at, have you seen the floor at Maya? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we go there for the, um, they had Taco Tuesdays. Mm. <laughs> so we go there for the Taco Tuesdays. I'm like, you should talk to, like, you should talk to the, the, the people behind Abaca and see if you can have a salsa night here. So we asked for an appointment. And luckily enough, they actually um, liked the idea of um, of a salsa night. Yeah, it was consistent to what they want to do, no? Yeah, it actually matches them. And like the the people behind Abac already knew what a salsa night was. So, and how different it was from uh, ballroom and dance sport. So he actually knew. So. Mm. Yeah, you know, I noticed that Abaca has a record, track record of Kind of collaborating good with uh, a lot of people in uh, the Cebu creative community, mm-hmm. in a sense. Yeah, like they have. You've seen their the, their artwork now, like the. Look on that's the, happy garage. Yeah, that's, uh, it looks really nice. Super nice. Um, yeah, I mean, I can name, I can name at, at least two, uh, fr- just from this podcast. Uh-huh. So happy garage. And? So they work with happy garage, and then I interviewed this other guy. He's a triathlete. Ah. Uh-huh. And then they they sponsor him. His name's uh, Christian Lim, ah. King Lim, no. And then uh, yeah, and then they're uh, so Murag. They're really working with people uh-huh. locally, said ba. Yeah, yeah. Like this guy, see, see si King Lim. I think there was like a like a triathlon in Naga. I think he, I think he was first place. Oh wow, Murag. Oh, he's like a legit <laughs> athlete. Like he's 
he's good. Yeah. <laughs> no? He's he a triathlete. Can, he can hike without pain. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, kato siya. <laughs> he, can, he can hike. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I remember I talked to him about like cycling and stuff. Uh, yeah, but yeah, and then yeah. of course you guys, uh, Abacus working with you guys. Yeah. Where it gets good to see like these establishments yeah. uh, making a mark, ba? Yeah, and we got lucky with because the culture they and gave everything. us like creative freedom. Like, what do you mean? Like, um, they we basically it's our event. That's what they tell us. Like, this is your event. Run it as best as you can. We're not even gonna tell you like, okay, you play this, you play that. Just mm. run it as best as you no, can. They trust you guys. Yeah, as long as it's like um, standard. Like you know, we have standards to maintain. We have to go through their standards as well. So it's good because it actually forces forced us to like level up because like you know from we went through all these places. It was just meant to be just fun, like nothing, nothing serious. So when they when they um, had us on, they like okay, let's like do let's do this properly. So it was just good. We had. How, to- I'm I'm uh, how how what uh, <laughs> what <laughs> do you properly? mean? Let's do it properly. Like be consistent. Ah, like and every week. It has to be something. consistent. It has to be done properly. It can't be like something that you just picked up off the street and like put there and like, oh, this is salsa. No, it has to be like you know, abaca ah. level standards. Yeah, like like the real the the salsa. There is a right way yeah. to dance yes. salsa. It cannot be like they were. They weren't. They didn't ask about like the right way, but they just like. So the abaca has a standard, and we have to go to that. That should yeah. be our standard as well. So it mm. was good. Yeah, because when you guys started, I assume like it, you didn't know how to dance salsa. No, it wasn't that actually. It was just how we were conducting ourselves, how we were talking to people, ah, how okay. like the whole scene was. So we basically grew from like mm, siponon kids, uh-huh. <laughs> siponon kids just wanting to have fun, and then like growing, 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 growing. So until we're like okay. Interna- um, international standard has to be. Yeah, because sometimes you do have like um, I noticed that some you eventually sometimes you post like uh, uh, like you have workshops with oh yeah some international teachers. Oh, we also. we have a lot of them. Oh yeah, yeah, we have a lot of them because we really want the scene to grow. Like you know, Cebu Philippines is funny because we're not exactly Asian, are we? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it, well, we are, but, well, but geographically, I think, but yeah, but like I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Like when people say Asian, they really think Chinese, Japanese, mm. Korean, Malay, Malay. Yeah, yeah. it's Malay, more but oh, but but our kind of, our it, culture is like super different. Mm. So we're not we're like uh, so one of our mentors were we. Teasing us like you're like the lost Latinos of Asia. The lost, <laughs> <laughs> really? Because we get the we have the attitude, like you know that, you know what I mean. Ah, okay, like, like the Latin party fiesta yeah, yeah. attitude. We're very smiling. We're so open, and we already know the music, anyways. And some of our well, a lot of, of uh, the words we use is still from yeah, like a Spanish heritage. Yes, exactly. So. So that's why he was teasing us. Oh, you're the lost Latinos of, <laughs> lost Latinos of Asia. Uh. Ashanos. <laughs> what? Ashanos, Asian Latinos. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> so. And even our, our our food is very different. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, we don't eat with chopsticks. We eat with our hands. We have a ceviche. That's very. What's ceviche? That's the kinilo. The kinilo, like yeah. Uh, but kinilo is actually like very Pacific Islander. Yeah, I actually yeah. really like our kinilo. Yeah. Did you see that katong that that uh, street food episode on uh, Netflix? Did you see that? I don't watch TV. <laughs> oh, oh well, can I, well, it was. Um, I actually don't really watch that much TV either. Uh, no, it, it became like a yeah. it, it became like a thing on social media. Oh, the the, the whole. Was this the Bakasi issue? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love Bakasi, by the way. I, I haven't, you know, I've never tried. Oh my god, so it's I really want to go. It's Mo delicious. Ba? Yeah, yeah. I really want to try. You can now. eat it two ways. You can get it crispy fried. Mm. That is really oh, good. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, it's yeah. really, really good. And then you can get it with the, that, uh, I forgot the name, but like larang or like a soup thing. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, that was the one that was featured in the Oh, that's Netflix. good as well. Do you eat maize? 
Mais? Um, like, diba, corn? there's humay, and then there's mais. Mais, corn, corn? Yeah, 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 corn. Yeah, oh, the cornbread? Yeah. Uh, corn rice? Corn rice, you eat yeah, that? Yeah, I can eat it. I don't usually eat it, oh, but I can eat it. it. They go very well. Mo ba? <laughs> no joke. Where do, you, where do you eat, where do you get that? Where mm. do you get it? At home, I'm joking. Are you making? <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the mais. No, you can get it like there's. No, I mean with the with the, the with bakasi? the yeah. Oh, in Cordova. Ah, uh, Cordova, get mm-hmm. that. Yeah, because like when you cook Cordova, uh, when you cook um larang or when you cook bakasi, you can't cook it like it's dead. You have to buy it like it's still alive in a plastic ah, bag. Ah, it's like super fresh. Yet. Yeah, alive and looking at you. <laughs> when you get the plastic bag that's full of um bakasi and um seawater. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. It's I've never tried it. Kind of like... I really want to try it. Like, I really want to go... It's delicious. It's very delicious, actually. It's just a bit, like, bony. Because, you know, it's bakasi. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, eel. Yeah. But it's delicious. Ooh. Well. Um, considering that... I know that, like, off mic, ba? Di ba? You, <laughs> you asked me. Yeah, katong, like... <laughs> katong, when I wasn't recording pa. Yeah. Like, you joined, like, this event. Ana, ah, katong, yeah. Because... That surprised me when you said, oh, I joined this uh, wine and cheese night. Because, you know, you get to meet other people. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you're always seeing the same people. And I was surprised to hear that from you. Because I was thinking, oh, wait, don't you meet so many different people? Already? <laughs> yeah, like through the through all of these events that you organize, like, you know, the, the, the booze cruise, mm-hmm. the salsa club, the even the volunteer in Cebu. No, don't you like? I was surprised to hear that, ba. Now you're, st- yeah, like still looking for avenues <laughs> to even meet more people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's- because like this podcast for me is like uh, the the secret benefit of this podcast is I get to have conversations with people like you who I hardly ever see. Uh, Can I like, hi, hello <laughs> Facebook lang. Lang, oh, or Facebook lang. Sunday, la- Sunday lunch outside Abaca. Yeah, <laughs> makita to. <laughs> yeah, that's right. With makita family, to Sunday. That's, that's what we always see <laughs> With your other. family also. Hey, hi. <laughs> oh, hello, hi. <laughs> hi. Oh. But yeah. No, oh. because the like, Cebu is getting bigger and bigger. Like the Cebu from, I don't know, outpost days is so... It's so different now. So, you know, always go out of your circle because otherwise you're going to be just, you have a myopic look on Cebu. So always get out. Yeah, but you I, I feel like, I don't think I know anybody else like you in a way, Ngamurag, kanang always meeting new people. Ba? Like you probably meet somebody new every time you have an event, almost. Yeah. Diba? <laughs> yes. And then I the <laughs> there's no good way to ask this, but I was and then I probably won't get a good answer, but I, in my head can work, where do you find the energy to do all that? Like I, I'm not peop- I'm not meeting like a hundred people at once. Oh no, I get it. I don't like that. Yeah. No. No, it's always like one connection, like or like two connections every time like on, on salsa night we prob- I probably meet one new person every night if there's somebody new do you like uh, grab them for a dance yes uh, you do good <laughs> oh yeah especially if like I can see that they dance because we have a shortage of men in case you want to try dancing uh. <laughs> <laughs> there's always like there's always like for example in class um, 10 girls one guy oh yeah I heard that's the ratio oh, like one is the 10 so oh, if you're a single Guys, if you're single <laughs> and listening to this, it's the best way to meet girls. Put your salsa shoes on. Yeah, girls don't care how you look <laughs> as long as you treat them nicely on the dance floor. What? Is uh, is there like an etiquette in the dance floor? Oh yeah, always. Can you There's talk about etiquette. that a little Like bit? for example, I'm not, I'm not um, familiar at all. Um, dance floor etiquette. You never ask a girl by like winking at her. Huh? And then shaking your you want to dance like that? <laughs> <laughs> Does that happen? Oh my god, oh, yes. <laughs> ah, didn't your mother ever teach you manners? <laughs> no, you always go up to a girl, you ask them for a dance, like, may I have this dance? And then you offer your hand like a gentleman. Oh. Dva, that's so much nicer. And girls don't really get that anymore. And then when you dance with her, you make sure she's comfortable, you don't grab her and like dance with her clothes immediately. 
So you always start like open hold and like. Start... Oh, so there's like a distance at first, and then you see how comfortable. Yeah, you like, gauge that. From yeah, there. like for me, I don't like uh, this like close hold because you can dance like that, but I don't like that. I like open, so I can see your face, mm. <laughs> and then like I'll, I'll gauge how if you're how we're communicating because you know you communicate with your hands. So the moment he grabs. Uh-uh. Or, or not. <laughs> grabs grabs the hand? Grabs the hand, no. It has to be like soft and it's a conversation. Ah, okay. So the moment you grab a hand or you use force, you're screaming at me. Ah, uh, that's right. So if if I'm trying to I'm trying to like I said, I have no context. So I'm guessing a Murag, like if somebody gets your hand and then like pulls you That's bad. Uh, that's not etiquette. That's like screaming. You're yeah, pulling your, you're your... pulling your partner. No, you never pull. It's See, always a suggestion. Would you like to turn? Well, yes, I would. Or otherwise, would you like to turn? No. Oh, okay. And this Let's is all. This. this is all communicated by, with, hand. by hand. Oh, interesting. I know it's great, and lots of people like it because um, men, like the men who do take our classes, they stay long because it's the only time a woman will ever listen. <laughs> <laughs> Ella, wanna? Can you step should join? <laughs> <laughs> you should join because, it, yeah, yeah. Boyfriends, if your girlfriends don't listen to you, or husbands, if your wife don't listen to you, come to class. <laughs> it's the only time they will listen. But no. nonverbal communication is all just the hand. So if the girl, like for example, you're leading her into a turn and she doesn't turn, that's okay. Mm. That's okay. You don't need to force her. And then you just do something else. Okay. Be smart and do something else. Or and it's not like there's a it's all about like really hand signals and putting your hand at exactly the same spot so that she has no her body will automatically move that direction. Well that's all something you learn good like with Yeah, it's a it's just a skill. Yeah. Like um I would say um what what was the Skill over natural talent, oh, or yeah. like uh, what do you call it? Work, uh, no, 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 work no. over talent. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Work, yeah, yeah. Work, yeah, you work, work, work at it. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. Because if you, yeah, if you're talented, you don't work at it. And yeah, just, you know, it's not, not, it's not. Yeah, there. but some of the, yeah, it's really work over talent. Dance is just, it's a skill really that you develop. I can imagine, kanang. I always think about like oh my god like wow if I was single and had and you know didn't have a girlfriend like oh okay you should join this this like like yoga would be one of them <laughs> you know but you get don't you don't get to... but that's the thing uh, you yeah. don't you don't communicate I feel like like the salsa like the dance in particular it you, because you forces really... you to be social yes yeah because I I was I would always think about that like atong before. I never thought like 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 going on a date, for example. I would never think of a movie date as a good date. No, because you're just watching. Yeah, because you sit, you know, you say hi in the beginning, and then you yeah. sit down, and then you don't learn anything yeah. from this person. And you don't discover anything about the um, other person. Mm. Whereas if you were like, okay, but you both sign up for a class, and then you'll see like, oh, so this is how he reacts to stress. This is how she reacts to stress. Or this is how she learns, or this is how she moves, or this is how he leads. So you can really tell a lot about a person by the way they dance. No? Mm. Yeah, considering that there is a 1 is to 10 ratio of men and women. <laughs> but, so like, we need more men. Well, men, it, come. It, <laughs> yeah, there's that. But then, so what happens? Like, Let's say, what about the nine other girls? So how do they... What happens in, in that well, situation? Well, now we're um, encouraging our girls to lead. Mm. So but leading is traditionally the male role and following is traditionally the female role. So now we're encouraging our girls to learn how to lead. It, it's also a plus because when you're learning how to lead, you're also learning how to follow because now you understand like, oh, so that's why like whenever I dance with a guy, he always has a problem with me doing this move. Because, ah, I didn't do that correctly. So now when you're following, you know, okay, so he's going to do this. So this is how I should move so that he can go directly into something else. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, um, I I know sort what of. you mean, but I can't. <laughs> Just can't imagine it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a dancer. I'm not a. <laughs> uh, I'm not a dancer. 
You weren't a dancer no. before? No. I'm not a dancer. Like, I was, I, I don't do, I never went to dance school. Like, you know, when you were a kid, I didn't go do ballet or what is it that kids do? Like, kids classes. I never mm. went to that. Like, I was doing summer art classes or things like that. Never dance. So dance was something that developed late. And I didn't think that I would actually like it. But because, you know, I have um, 15 years experience of doing the getting hands in the air. Hands in the, that's, yeah, that's hands me. That's my dance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm an expert at right hand, left hand up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So how did that develop? How did you get into, how did you get into dance? I like the music. I just like the music. No, like really, like didn't your like parents like ever play like Latin music when you were growing up? They would like Oye Como Va. Yeah, like a yeah. lot of um. So uh, Santana, my, my dad Spredo. used to just. We I've actually seen Santana. Oh really? Yeah, he's oh, man. Well, he's one of my like guitar yeah. favorites. Yes, that one. But mostly, so it was Santana. I was gonna say Santana, mm-hmm. but I think it was basically Santana. <laughs> Everything else my dad would play would be like the Beatles or mm. uh, some seventies. Yeah. Rock, lot but, of Queen, lot oh, of Queen. Oh yeah, Queen. Uh, so not I never got that. And you never heard them play cha cha like at like some family reunion. I guess not. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I you know like my grandma. So like my my sister, like I mentioned, is into dance. Uh-huh. Uh huh. My grandma is uh, Faye Sala Villarica, and she she started the first uh, ballet studio I think here in. Oh, where's that? In the in Cebu. Oh, she started um. Oh man, I am blanking. The Arts <laughs> Arts Council of Cebu, I think. Ah, okay. Yeah, cool. and then that was through ballet. Mm. And then? And then for whatever reason, you know, I just never got into you ballet? know. Just, yeah, I mean, you know, not, not my sisters they were forced. <laughs> <laughs> they to have do no ballet. choice. Yeah. Oh, but it's a really good training. Like now I actually wish like man, I should have asked for ballet lessons when I was a when I was a child, but I was more interested in playing with toy guns. So oh yeah, no, but my sister. So my sister, my youngest sister, she really got into it. Mm-hmm. Went to school for dance. Yes, really uh, good training. Yeah, yeah, she's from what I hear, quite good. I I am not <laughs> a good gauge of that sort of talent, <laughs> no. And then moto, but the so I I, I wanted to say at first that there was no real dance. In our family, but the thing is, there really was. It was a big part of our family growing up, but just not. I don't know for whatever reason, it never it got to you. Like, yeah, uh, oh, that's okay. Oh yeah, no. I mean, I I'm a lot less self conscious now. Like, I don't. I'm not. You know, but I, I don't consider myself you like a dancer. Try, because you never know. Like, I, like I said, it's just a skill. Oh, and um, music comes first. If you don't like the music, there's no way you can dance it. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh. Yeah. So that's what we always say, like in class, like music comes first. So when you guys have the class, there's like a DJ. No, we play like uh, music that progresses. So, mm, yeah, ex- so you have a playlist na daan. Mm, we, we research, um, we update our songs every every five weeks. Or if we find like a new song, like, hey, you know what? This would be a great um, song for class because the this instrument is very clear. And this will give the students a marker for where they should step. Oh, it's music really... music comes first. What kind of music? Uh, like, let's say I wanted to download like salsa music. Mm-hmm. What what which artists? Uh, I'm not. I, this is totally out of my. Yeah, no problem. Ah, so like right now, I'm into La Maxima. La Maxima. La Maxima. They're That's the artist. F- yeah, they're a full band. Like they're they're like you know they're a current band and Tromboranga. Trombo- so they're on Spotify and uh, oh yeah, look them up. They're like so good. Oh uh, yeah, like super uh, obviously super danceable music. Oh uh, yeah, but it's just like uh, you know how like f- your ears go like this if you hear something like wow, that's like oh uh, like listen to that instrument and listen to how they're like setting it up so you know like at this part of the song it bam drops and then back back again, yeah. <laughs> oh, I wanna... It starts. It really starts with the music. Like salsa, like like for me, salsa music is like wow. 
like once you hear like um different bands because a lot of like when i started i was strictly into so salsa music can be a lot there's different types and you dance it according to the music so there's a um oh my god i'm also blanking out man you <laughs> 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 no, uh, so right. So when I started um, dancing salsa, I was into Cuban salsa, and the, the songs that I liked were called timba. Timba. T i m b a. That's a genre. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's salsa music, but it's timba salsa. Okay. So it's very heavy on the bass and like boom, 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 boom. So you automatically know, and there's a lot. So that music makes you go like you know, chest back, back. Mm. Like it's very strong, like this. And then later on, when I started learning other types of salsa, I liked other music. So now you can actually dance like I like son, Cuban son, which is different. There's um, music that is good for on one salsa, and then there's music that is good for mambo. Those are on all two. like different types of oh, salsa. Yeah. Oh yeah, and like the their music is very different. So that's why we, as an exercise for our students as well. Listen to the song first. Like, listen. Like, what type of song is it? How should you dance it? Because if it's a hyper song, you dance it that same way. You, you know, you convey the emotion to that. But if it's a song, like, that just flows, it's very... Then you you, you dance the same way. Okay, it looks so funny if it's a, a, so, a soft, easy song, and then you're like, ah, doing all these crazy moves. Like, mm, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, it has to match the exactly. the, the mood. Yeah. Is there like a, a band in Cebu that does salsa music? Wait. Wait for it. <laughs> oh, pa. We're working on it. Are you working we're on working it? We're working oh, on it. So we're like trying to find people. So we're slowly, slowly, slowly building it. Slowly. That would be really cool. Diba? I know. Like proper, like a full band salsa. We're working on it. So, hey. Artist, <laughs> <laughs> what do you need? Like, what, what kind of uh... a lot? But um, yeah, John is coordinating that one. Yeah, because John's in the mu- John. John said the music, but obviously metal. in the he was in the metal. Uh, <laughs> he, he, that's right. Like, I, I, I met I met John yeah. first for sure. Yes, like uh, in, uh, in House of Indies. Yes, yes. Yeah, and he was there. He was their uh, uh, screamer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they just had a gig. I'm the about like the 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 uh, Philia, the band was just here and they were playing for them, opening for them. Oh yeah. yeah what's his, What's John's band now? Uh, it's the same. Streets of Me. I'm about. Oh. oh, same band, huh? Yeah, same band. Older. <laughs> Obvi- well, we're all Every- older. Everybody's older. <laughs> We used to go there a lot, like in House of Indies. You should go back. Oh, well, well no, I'm not in the... My, my band... I'm the only one left here from no. my, all my bandmates. Oh, you want to go into salsa? Huh? <laughs> no, I'm not joking. No, no, I'm not. I'm not a... Uh, I'm... No, I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> no, like, listen to the... Seriously, listen to I the I will. Music. I'll give those two... Yeah. Those... Uh, I forgot the names, but it's here in the in the podcast. Yeah. What's it called? Um, La Maxima. La Maxima and, and Tromboranga. Tromboranga. They're so good. Like I want to hear them live. I bet they would just blow your mind off. Well, no, yeah. So we're working on it. We are we're already started finding people who can making them listen to the music and finding if they can actually find like you know the groove yes. or they're into it and ah uh, yeah. But here, and, I mean. At some point, you'll find Cebu is filled with like ridiculously talented musicians. So much musicians. talent, I know. So that we yeah, are, we're heading there. <laughs> mm. I think the challenge will be long. Is that, uh, is that a lot of the musicians probably haven't really, really, really listened to salsa. That's probably going to be yeah. the 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 challenge. Yeah, but we um we we surprisingly enough um there's uh. John's old friends from the House of Indies, mm. like so, the people who used to hang out there have, have all come to Maya and they've listened to the songs and they were like, "Whoa, I didn't know it was. <laughs> it can be that kind of salsa because everybody has this, like you know, even myself when I started, I thought like it was gonna be like you know that that or what do you call that keyboard synthetic sound, but once you listen to it, you're like, wow." So a lot of them have already listened to like the songs that we like. We send them links here. What do you think of this song? 
So they go, oh, hey, I think I can do that. Or, um, I think I need to, um, kana, practice pahangin sa, <laughs> oh, pahangin sa takay mo naglisod na. <laughs> that's hard. That's oh, well, like, like a trumpet, you mean? Not just, uh, the drums. The drums. The drums, the guitar, oh, okay, the, okay. the bass, everything is. It's just, it's, it's. Yeah, I kind of want to make you listen quite, to it now. <laughs> I will, I will listen for sure. And yeah, I, after, I am after, interested. After I have a lot of music here. Oh, uh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, uh, actually, we've only we've been um, talking for about an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, so usually it, I try to make it like kind of like an hour, no. But uh, is there anything that, that you want to plug or mm. talk about? Um, well, aside from all the regular artists that, well, all the international artists that we do invite to come over. So when we do have workshops, um, the teachers that we invite are really. Um, established teachers. So, um, we have, a. so we just had one of the um, first central bachata teachers, um, in the world. He's one of the pioneers. His, his name? Been, uh, Alex Alberola. He's from Spain and he, his students have all become, um, top bachata artists in the world. And he was here. He was teaching and it's really, Amazing to hear it directly from them, you know, how you're supposed to dance, musicality, and a lot of technique. So it really changes the way you move or, yeah. And then he was one, but in August, we're bringing in um, an a, a international salsa champion. Again, he was here last year. We're bringing him back again this year, and he's going to be training everybody for um, a week. So it would be good if people took their um beginner. What's his name? Uh Richard Thulur. Mm. So you're going to have like it's going to be on your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're we're we're, release, we're releasing it very very soon. Um we're just finalizing his flights. So uh, the the t- the times he arrives and until when he can stay in the Philippines, but when he was here last year, um he was here for a week and we really saw a, like a huge improvement on how people were dancing in just one week that he was here. But of course, you, it, it doesn't make sense to take his class when you haven't had foundations yet. Yeah, yeah, he's not a basic. No, it's this also such a, a, advanced, a waste uh, of your a waste of his time and yeah. a waste of your money if you're going to do basics with him. You should have your basics down so that when he comes, you can like go for the next level stuff. Mm. How does that work? So you have to, you're bringing them in. You're bringing him in. Yes. Oh. So, and he's really, really good. He's really, really good. Just even just dancing with him, you go, ah, I feel so pretty. (laughs) 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 No, it it does make you feel pretty when like, uh, when there's a lead who makes you dance properly and makes you feel good about yourself. Like you feel pretty like, oh, I'm so pretty, Jude. So yeah, that's happening in August. Yes, and then um, this January will be our second Cebu International Beach Festival. January two thousand twenty. Yes, twenty twenty. We're preparing ahead because we're bringing in a lot of um, international artists who are very at the top of their game. So we we ha- already had it last this year, la- um, last January, we had artists. World champions from Australia who came here, um, the top bachata dancers in the world, um, Dario Ansara from Spain. Mm. So we had so many artists who came here, like uh, Nelson Campos, um, Raymond Gerard. Like seriously, a lot of people came here and they were teaching, um, but not uh, there were a lot of people from outside the country who came and took their workshops. But we need more locals. Because the reason that we're bringing him them here is for the locals to learn from them to grow, so it's kind of like it's uh we made the festival for the local community, so it would be great if the local community actually came out and um took their workshops while they're here. And you're gonna have details of that all on. Uh, it's already on ah, it's Facebook, so we have a separate page for it. Mm. It's called the uh, Cebu International Beach Festival. How do you guys like fund all that? Just bringing artists in to the Philippines, the flights alone, and not to mention even the hotels. And I know. Everything. You see, I lost hair. <laughs> <laughs> 
I lost hair. No, I have not noticed. <laughs> I lost hair. I'm so thin now. <laughs> I lost weight. <laughs> I'm not sleeping. <laughs> it's so stressful, but it's worth it. Like mm. you know, it's so worth it. I actually, I often ask myself why I do this, <laughs> but then when the artists come here, and then you see like the effect that it has in the community and the people, like, okay, it was worth it. Yeah. Well. So I think we can end. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth yeah. it. Come on, Sibu, we can do this. We're the Latinos of Asia. Yeah, like if you're into dance, definitely. I'll link to everything in the show notes. When you're speaking of, so where can people Sibu. find you online? So maybe the Cebu Salsa yes, Facebook page. Cebu or... Salsa Club. So everything links to Cebu Salsa Club. So like the festivals and the workshops is linked through there. Just okay. at Cebu Salsa Club, Facebook or Instagram. Ah, Instagram, Nasa. Mm-hmm. Okay. I know because like young people are more into Instagram now. We have to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Us old people have to learn tricks. <laughs> Joking. <laughs> hey, do you have a personal like Instagram or public yeah. page? Yeah, yeah. Said... It's um. Uh, what did I use? Oh my god, Jilly Fishy, I think Jilly Fishy Fishy. I on think. Instagram. Yeah. On oh yeah, Instagram. I'll, link, I'll link to that too. Sigi. Okay, Joe. Thank you so Salamat much. Sa. Thank you for the coffee. Oh, thank you're you for welcome. the interview, and I'll see you on the dance floor. Oh uh, yeah, we'll, <laughs> we'll we'll see. I'll uh, I I'll make ha- you listen to the song. Yeah, let's listen. I think you. I also have a sprained ankle, so it's gonna oh, be a bit difficult. My, no, no, no. That's not an excuse. Remember, like um, we went to the we went hiking. Yeah. Immediately after hiking, we went home, showered, like took a took a three hour nap, and went to salsa night. That's that's different from a sprained ankle. No, like my, my everything hurts. Like even my 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 like. Hurts. Have you ever had a sprained ankle? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. You just wrap I, it in. I, 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 I do not feel the empathy. <laughs> Zero empathy. <laughs> I, I'm like, wait, that, that does not sound like no, the pain I know, of a but sprained you, ankle. You just put like, the thing on your ankle, you're fine. No, let's start with the music first and then go from there. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I, I'll be honest with you. It's something that, that can... Um, I've I've talked to Steph about, mm-hmm. but Are you know, you guys we interested just, doing. Yeah, it'd be fun. I I legitimately think it would be fun for us to do, even just once, but just to try. Yeah, um, you know? it's a great exercise. I tell you because it works on your, um, the other side of your brain, on both sides of the brain, because you have to be creative and you have to be technical. Yeah. At the same time, it works on your balance. It works on your core. Works on your grace. On your musicality. Yeah. Well, no. I, I don't wanna. I'm. I want to try it. I want to try it. <laughs> not, not, <laughs> not because of that. I want to try it because I think it'll be fun. I don't think I'm going to be any good at it. You just don't think. You um, know, the funny thing is, um, um, a lot of the guys who sign up for our classes are programmers. Amoba. It's very technical because they like it. Like in the beginning, we thought that it would be more the creative types who would take the classes, but we're very happy that oh, like the. The, the more the, the math inclined people are, are into it. It's because it's actually like, you know, your hand should be like in the beginning of the class when we finally had people like uh, the math people come in. So the we're math like, people. yeah, we call them the math people because <laughs> <laughs> they're very exact. So like when I step, how much of, uh, how many degrees should I turn my leg? Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, or uh, okay. if I raise my hand to turn a girl, how many degrees? How much pressure? Which part of the hand should touch? Like all of this stuff. And it's actually really technical when you think about it. But then you have to be technical and flow at the same time. Mm. Yeah, like I, I my thinking there is like anang, when you practice, that's when you're thinking about it. That's when you Yeah. I, I Usually, kana mga yung ana, I try to relate it to basketball, so or music or music. Yeah. But basketball is an easy one because, like, <laughs> for example, with basketball, there's a right and wrong way to shoot. Ah, no, elbows in, ah. parallel, your arms parallel to the to the rim, that sort of thing. Ah. no, but you can't think about that while you're shooting. Ah, because if you think about it while you're shooting. So You're so gonna get th- too much in, too in your head. You, uh. It has to just flow. Ah, no? okay. So that's why when you practice, you try to get the form right, and then 
at some point you kind of have to it forget muscle, it has to be second nature yeah it becomes muscle memory muscle already. memory so that's why we have the homework so that's why the class is five weeks because you don't really see a lot in mm. four if you have the classes in five weeks so how many how mm, many ten sessions? sessions so twice a week twice a week and we encourage you to take both but at least once a week and then it's free to retake so after I'm the over. yeah after the five weeks course you're not le- ready to go to the next level or if you still have questions or you just want to work on your form then go back we encourage you to because like you know the basics is the hardest to master like oh, for sure yeah because even myself like i still practice my basics because it you know you get lazy after a while, you make mistakes, so that's when you're like, why am I not doing that turn correctly? Or what's wrong? Why am I going off of my line? So that's when we practice, we practice with our students. So when they're doing their, um, their warm-ups and their exercises at the start of the class, we, we join them. Mm. Okay. Well, um, I'll let you know if we... Uh... <laughs> If you ever sign up for the class, no, no, no. No, I will, we'll we'll show. Well, I want to show up in a social, like first, uh, yeah, yeah. And the the class, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> no, did you not commit? Huh? Yeah, but yeah, uh, socials uh, first, music first. Yeah, yeah. Music appreciation first. So, so we teach different dances, and like a lot of people always ask us, so what's the difference? And mm. we show them videos of our students dancing. We don't show them the professionals. Like, no, we, teach, we show them like our five-week students, how they dance after five weeks. So, okay, because that's, that's doable. Every, everybody get, always gets to that level. And then, um, then they ask us, which should we learn first? Salsa, bachata, kizomba? And I tell them, um, it doesn't matter. Listen, like, look at this playlist. Which one makes you move? Mm. Which one do you like more? So you have classes for the different mm-hmm. dances that you Yeah. So when they hear, like, for example, some people actually like Kizomba more because, like, the, the music is sexy, it's more modern. So, okay, I like this. Oh, so you start with that. And then when they're doing, like, Kizomba, they go, like, oh, I like this also. What is this? Oh, this is Bachata. Oh, okay, then I'll take that one, too. Mm. So like that, that band, like, La Maxima? La Maxima. That's what, what, what? Salsa. That's salsa. That's salsa. salsa get. Okay. Yeah. Um, for bachata, I would recommend. Um, so the thing with bachata is the reason that it's more popular these days is because of the DJs. So what they do is they take a modern song and then they remix it into bachata. Mm. So like they add a Latin flavor. All the all the instruments needed for bachata they added. So we we'll, can we can go technical on a bachata. I have a. Yeah, a, let's listen. Yeah, later. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh no, let's listen now. No? We're good. Okay, yeah. No, but there's no internet here. Well, we can try going outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, again, thank you so thank much you too. for doing the interview. Of course, anytime. Sige. Salamat. So, who wants to go dancing? Let's go. Come on, let's go. Snap if you're listening. Back back in the day, if uh, if you're listening to the podcast, I mentioned it, but there were my my wife before used to like to go out to these clubs, so we used to go to clubs, dance, and I had this irrational fear of dancing. I, I felt like you know people were looking at me and judging me, which which in reality nobody cares really. I think there's a word for that, like the spotlight effect, but the reality is no one cares, no one really is looking at you uh, I, I still have this little fear that it's still there today but I try to not let it conquer me anymore so I'm totally fine maybe maybe one beer and then I'll I, I think I can go dancing I think I'm good so yeah who wants to go dancing thank you to graphic 9 and cube gallery for sponsoring the podcast the music from this podcast is piano march by Audia Nautics I really want to get uh, local music for the intro and outro of the podcast and honestly it wouldn't take much for me to to ask for a favor from an artist or, or to give somebody a call and and probably get a track for free they probably just say go ahead and use it but i want to be able to pay for the music you get what i'm saying like get, get some sort of a license to use it maybe for a year or something 
at le- it's the least that I can do. You know, I- I'm I'm here harping about how creatives should be valued, etc., etc., etc. So, if I'm gonna use music, I'd like to pay for it. At least pay what I can. Currently, it doesn't make financial sense to do that. But that's why I have a Patreon account. So if you head over to our Patreon account, you go to patreon.com slash 032 in letters. I have a link to it in the show notes as well. But we have a goal for the month. For like Patreon is this thing which, which allows you to give like a monthly uh, subscription if you want to support uh, if you want to support somebody. So like my current subscription is either like a dollar, five dollars, or ten dollars. And there's several um like uh freebies and stuff that you get from the subscription. Like for example, if you give five dollars, we give you a free t-shirt, something like that. And then anyway, so the goal, but there's there are goals also. So we have a the first goal is a hundred dollars a month. Currently, as of this reading, I'm at thirty-one dollars a month. And if we get to a hundred dollars a month, it will allow us to pay a local musician or artist for their music. So that would be cool. Like it would be cool to get a local artist, some like some like a local piece of music, something that I like and listen to onto the podcast for the intro. Like a clip. Imagine if it's a little clip. So if you want to uh Help support that cause. Want to learn more about it? Head over to patreon.com slash 032. That's 032 in letters. I'll link to it in the show notes. And uh, if you still want to find another way to support, you can always buy 032 merchandise. We You can go to assembly.032.com to just head over and, and order stuff. Or if you are low on cash, I totally understand. We've all been there. But if you still want to help out, if you still want to support the show, please share this episode on social media. It's free. Sharing is free, man. So, you know, I get it. Sometimes we're a little low in cash. You can share it on social media. And that's it. That would help a lot. It will help this show a lot. This will help us get more listeners and allow us to make more shows and feature more people from the creative community if you've listened all the way through thank you so much i'll see you again next tuesday ciao bye